Welcome back to another tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about the volumetric clouds. We're going to do an overview analysis of volumetric clouds and how to use them. So the volumetric clouds were introduced in 4.26 for everyone to use. And this is a physically based cloud rendering system that uses a material driven approach to give you the freedom to create any clouds you want. Before the volumetric clouds, you would have to use a static mesh sphere and then a material applied onto that sphere that would render static or animated clouds. And now with the introduction of volumetric clouds, you have complete artistic control of how these clouds appear in the sky. They work directly and in real time with the direction of light. So when you change the light to sun position, the volumetric clouds react accordingly and realistically to scatter light and to occlude light. Not only that, you can even go up into the clouds, something that you would never be able to pull off with the older previous method. Now out of the box, as soon as you begin to use the volumetric cloud actor, it's not very clear or that simple to know what to do, what to control, what to change, and how to use the volumetric clouds in your environments. So I wanted to do an analysis, a breakdown of what's happening behind the scenes of this volumetric cloud actor, how it's working and how you can begin to use it with more confidence and more control. So let's begin. You have three main ways of adding volumetric clouds. The first one is the easiest one and probably the most commonly used one. You go to place actors, visual effects, and insert volumetric cloud actor. It already has a cloud material assigned to it. And as soon as you insert it, you will have clouds appear in the sky. The second way is to insert a blueprint that will render a single cloud in the sky. And then you can position that cloud by moving the blueprint actor. You can resize it, you can rotate it, and then you can duplicate it. And the third way you can manually paint in where the clouds will appear in the sky. The first way is going to be the most commonly used and the easiest one. And the last two will require a bit of setup and you'll have to access these blueprints which aren't available by default when you install and run UE4. So you'll have to enable a plugin before you can access and use the last two options. Let me show you the most basic setup for a level to make the volumetric clouds work. Here I have a completely empty map with just a ground plane. First I'm going to go to place actors, lights, and then you the direction light. I'm going to go to details panel and change the intensity to something lower, 3.14 which is the recommended default value for the directional light. And this is what I start with. Then change it to movable. Then we need to go back to place actors, visual effects, and insert a sky atmosphere. Then we need to go back to directional light and we need to link directional light and sky atmosphere to work together. So for the directional light, scroll down and enable atmosphere sunlight. As soon as you do that, the two actors will be linked and you will begin to have an atmosphere. Then go back to lights and we need a skylight. For this, I'm going to change it to movable and enable real time capture. This will make the skylight capture lighting more accurately. And last, go back to visual effects and insert volumetric cloud. And as soon as you do that, you will have the volumetric clouds render and appear in the level. So this is the most basic setup that you need to make the volumetric clouds work. Volumetric cloud actor has a material property that uses a specific material to render these clouds. And this is where the actual clouds come from, from this material. Now within the volumetric cloud actor in the details panel, you have very limited control for displaying these clouds. You have layer bottom altitude. This defines where the cloud layer starts to render. And this is set in kilometers. Then you have the layer height. This is the actual cloud layer and where it ends. And it's also set in kilometers. Then you have tracing start max distance and tracing max distance, which control the far away distance and where these clouds stop rendering. So you can go ahead and adjust these four to see what they do. So you can begin to adjust their properties. But the actual visual quality of the clouds is controlled by the material. Now to get access to this material that is being used by default 
with the volumetric cloud actor. You need to enable engine content. So come down here and enable engine content. Then you will have a new folder inside the content browser show up and it's named engine content. Then scroll down until you find engine sky and then go inside volumetric clouds folder. And then here, this is where the material and the material instance are that is being used. So if you double click on the material instance, this is what is actually assigned in the material property. And then here you have a lot of other options for controlling the visual aspect of the material of these clouds being rendered. So you can go ahead and enable every single one of these and begin to change them and see what happens inside your map. Now this material instance is being of course drawn from the material. So you can open up the material and take a look at how this volumetric cloud material was created. And this will give you a bit more understanding of what's happening underneath these volumetric clouds being rendered. Now we're not going to cover what every single one of these do and how to create your own volumetric cloud material. I will do that in another tutorial. But just being able to reverse back and see the material itself gives you a bit more control to know what's happening. And you could begin to reverse engineer this volumetric cloud material so you can begin to create your own or at least to begin to tweak it. Now it's important to point out that in addition to the material, the material instance and the volumetric cloud actor, the layer properties, you have two other actors that define what happens to these volumetric clouds. The first one is directional light. If you select it and then scroll down in the details panel to atmosphere and cloud, you will find a few cloud settings and their behavior of what happens to these clouds and shadows as it affects directional light and it will affect the way the clouds are going to be rendered. And also inside the skylight, if you scroll down to atmosphere and cloud, you have a few other properties to define how clouds will behave. And this mainly has to do with cloud ambient occlusion. So right from the start at default level, you have layer properties in the volumetric cloud actor, you have the material, and then you have directional light and skylight. Now the skylight and the directional light are important, but they're not going to be defining the actual shape of the cloud, only as it has to do with the light and how it affects the clouds. Inside engine content, engine sky, and volumetric clouds folder, you have very limited amount of examples. You have few mask textures, few volume textures, and one material. And this is what's being used in the volumetric cloud actor by default. But if you want to get access to more of what the clouds have to offer and a lot more examples to reverse engineer and learn from, you need to enable Volumetrics plugin. So you need to go to settings, plugins, and search for Volumetrics. And then you would enable it. It is disabled by default and I already have mine enabled. And once you enable it, you will have to restart the editor. Then once you do, you have to go to view options and enable show plugin content. This will display all plugin content folders inside the content browser, right below engine content. And you want to scroll down all the way to volumetrics content. Open that up and you will have two folders, content and tools. And then here is where you will have all the examples needed for volumetric clouds. And it's in here where you will find the blueprint cloud actors, the ones where you place the clouds by themselves, or where you paint the clouds in the sky. Both of these are blueprints, so you'll find them here. You'll have example maps, you'll have more materials, and more textures to choose from, to use, and to learn from. So if you wanted to try a different volumetric cloud material, you just simply drag that material over the material slot inside the volumetric cloud actor and replace it. So you could have some different cloud shapes from the examples. And if you want to revert back, just reset it to default. Now, very last tip, if you want to get started very quickly without having to create or reverse engineer any of the examples or create your own material, just go to File, New Level, and choose Time of Day. Inside this level, you will have everything set up already for you to use. So adjust the light, the directional light, and see the changes being made in real time to your lighting and how it affects the clouds. Press Ctrl L and move the mouse. You will begin to adjust the directional light its position and see it affect the sky atmosphere and the volumetric clouds. 
The one thing that I like to do is to delete the sky dome mesh. This is a previous way of creating clouds by using a sky sphere static mesh. And it has a material sound down to it. You don't need it, not anymore, not with volumetric clouds. And it could be a bit confusing when you see additional clouds being rendered and you don't know where they're coming from. So you can go ahead and delete that and just use volumetric cloud. So use the time of day template to get started. And if you want to continue and explore more, you have the examples and the volumetric plugin that you need to enable to look at all the examples. And I will have another tutorial out that will show you how to create your own custom volumetric cloud material to begin using if I don't have it out already. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like, subscribe. And if you want to learn more about how to use Unreal Engine 4 as a complete beginner so you can begin to create your own environments, I have a tutorial course, UE4 Fundamentals Volume 1, The Essential Beginner's Guide to Getting Started with UE4. And then I also have the second volume that will teach you everything you need to know to begin creating landscapes in Unreal Engine 4. You can download both of these courses on worldoflevelddesign.com store.